welcome back to Engineers Workshop. I'm going to call this another miscellaneous video for you. I've got a little bit of this and that going on. Still working on the adapting uh, of the, the six inch buck forge out chuck to the D14 backplate. Doing that on the Acroturn lathe. Um, setting up to rework some parts for my son's Spitfire. The axle adapters that uh, we made and were mismeasured to, you know, it didn't fit on the, the, the bolt pattern coming off of the differential. And then uh, also got a number of smaller parts and things I had to do for the Spitfire over the, pa really over the past year. Some of the video I've gone back and looked at for the Spitfire is, is kind of old. I'm still getting used to the features of the King and T, still not knowing exactly you know how accurate it was so uh, forgive that but you know I'll show you some of the things that I did for him uh, over the months and we'll just we'll just call this a miscellaneous machining and shop video so uh, enjoy and uh, let's get over to the machines here's a factory differential for Sun Spitfire project uh, up here at the top is where the transverse leaf, leaf spring mounts and then the factory um, output flanges. This thing's going to fall off the bench. What he has to have me do is help uh, duplicate a couple of front mounting points. There's some suspension bushings that attach here. And he made um, some quarter inch or 5 16 thick steel plates. He's going to make as part of a fabrication to duplicate this piece and he needs the one inch and fifty thousandths hole in these uh, in these plates that he made um, I measured these with a caliper diameter is not critical at all it's just clearance for the rubber bushing and the bolt to pass through but we'll take those pieces over to the mill and mill out those um, one inch fifty thousandths clearance holes so here's the mounting tabs that uh, my son came up with. They're actually three-eighths of an inch thick, mild steel. And here's his attempt at starting a uh, one-inch fifty-thousandths hole. Ran into some severe chatter with the drill press, and uh, we'll clean that up. We'll center up on that hole and take these out to one-inch oh fifty. Here's my setup for finding the center of the pilot hole this piece and it is pretty much old school this is a coaxial indicator which uses an arm and basically you set the offset of the arm to be slightly greater than the feature you're locating on and you watch the wiggle of the needle under power and the um, you just adjust the X and the Y axis until you get the least amount of wiggle on the scale and that's when you're centered up so let's see how this works out I'm going to come down with the quill until I'm about halfway into the bore of this feature. So there's a lot of needle oscillation. You basically need to look to minimize that. First with the x-axis. Figure out which direction reduces it. looks to be about the smallest we can get. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. My material is three-eighths of an inch thick. I'm skittish about trying to do this in one pass, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go halfway through. We're going to offset the head and we're going to do a one inch diameter and then we're going to walk that circle Then I'm going to plunge through the rest of the way and we're going to walk the circle again and then uh, hopefully then we'll just do a cleanup pass to one inch fifty thousandths. So because we have a three-eighths of an inch cutter we subtract the radius of the cutter 0.1875 from our offset and then that gives us uh, the perimeter of the cutter cutting 
at the um, desired diameter of one inch. Okay, first thing will be our 300 thousandths plunge cut. You know what, I'm so nervous, I'm gonna do a 100 thousandths plunge cut. Okay, here we go. For the final pass of this, I'm going to plunge through and uh, try to get you a little bit closer up on the action. So basically I'm at, I was able to see a one inch 030, 20 thousandths more on the diameter, 10 thousandths on the radius. And I can do that while the head is in motion, dial up another 10 thousandths, and I should be able to hit the 1 inch 050 dead nuts. So I'll show you how I dial up um, an offset while the head is in motion. First we'll come down with our quill. We're going to dial in those last uh, 10 thousandths on the radius while everything's in motion. So first we'll come down with our quill. Close enough for rubber bushing. To indicate this in, I use the highest speed of the rotary head, which is 3 RPM, and sweep the bore of the pilot hole, which is pretty irregular and rough. But I've got it to within, you know, a thousandths TIR, which is close enough to locate the clearance hole for a rubber bushing. So we'll pull the indicator setup off. Now we've got a dial in our offset for a half inch cutter. First I'll plunge through, then we'll clean out the cut and I will uh, walk the circle. Actually let's make a witness circle first and then we'll plunge through. I think that's a nice speed since we'll be going full depth in one pass. So my first pass at the one inch hole gave me exactly one inch. I mean, it, it's not even a half thousandths under. So to increase to a one inch 050 hole, I need another 25 thousandths on the radius. I'm going to go ahead and plunge through, put the head in motion, and then dial that additional uh, 25 thousandths to the offset of the head while we're in motion.
I also increased the speed of the head slightly since we're just taking off 25 thousandths per side. One inch 048. Oh, that is close enough for a rubber bushing. Let's dismount this and compare it to the other. One of the things I've noticed is the finish on this part is superior to the other one. The other one I used a dull cutter, a 3 8 diameter, uh, although dull, carbide end mill. And when I was dialing in the first cut and then uh, trying to increase the diameter, I dialed in another 10 thousandths and I got, I got nothing. I dialed in another 10 thousandths and then it finally started to cut. So when I was doing the initial uh, full diameter cut, you know, it was cutting on size, but then when all the cutting forces shifted to one side, I was getting a lot of, you know, resistance because of the dullness of the cutter and it wasn't, um, wasn't acting linearly. Now this one, you know, I, I dialed up uh, another uh, 20, 25 thousandths on the radius and that's what I got. So, you know, within a thousandths or so, I could probably do a spring pass and get this a little closer, but it pays to have a sharp cutter. piece on the left was done first. It was done with a uh, dull cutter, carbide cutter, 3 8 diameter. And you can see the difference in finish quality. But one of the things that uh, doesn't really show up was the fact that did a rough cut on both of these to one inch diameter and then I needed to increase to uh, one inch 050 and so I started to uh, dial up additional offset in this piece. I dialed up 10 and checked the whole diameter and it didn't increase. Dialed up another 10 I checked the whole diameter and it didn't increase so I dialed up another 10 and then it started cutting and I actually ended up uh, two thousandths oversize on it. This one, I dialed up an additional 25 thousandths offset and it cut to within two thousandths of that number on the first shot. So, dull cutters give you deflection and it does not give you the accurate results that you can get from uh, using a sharp cutter. Well, here's a setup that would make Brian Block proud or cringe depending on how you want to look at it got the uh, Datsun 510 differential fixtured up as best I can, clamping on uh, the lower half of this mounting tab in the vise and propping up on some scrap steel and one of my T-slot cleaners and a railroad spike. I've got this surface level as, can, as I can get it with the relative to the surface of the table. And we're going to mill out this uh, aluminum bearing retainer. Let me get you a close up on that. What I don't want to do is touch that bearing race. I'm advancing 15 thousandths closer to the outside of the case. Now the trick will be, can we get some force on this and relieve some of the pressure with all that aluminum still at the bottom. I have no idea how deep that goes, but that's preventing this from, from collapsing up on itself. I 
if you look real close at that hole, we've got the threads at the top for about the first half inch. And then it steps in and there's a sealing surface and we machine through an O-ring groove. Pretty much all the way through um, the side wall, there's down at the bottom, something gets hard there. I can't tell if that's part of the aluminum, but I've come in all the way against the OD of the, uh, the bearing race on this side. So I think it is a matter of dismounting it and start reapplying some heat and hopefully we can get this race to collapse enough to come out. I switched over to a three flute, um, just a high speed steel end mill because this has a longer cut length and I'm, I'm reaching down in there pretty deep. So I'm going to continue to cut with this uh, new mill, brand new. If you can see what it what happened there, it looks like I finally separated the bottom half of this, which turns now from the top. So the top of this should really be free to unscrew. Anyone know what the trick is to getting the ring gear out of this? There we go. Now there's how to remove a uh, ring gear from a Datsun 510 transmission by only destroying two parts, which are the outer carriers. This one we managed to get apart without uh, destroying the seal. I imagine you can purchase or make those. Just to give you a perspective, the Dana 70 rear end in the F350 uh, truck has like a 10 inch ring gear. This is maybe five, between five and six. I don't know if they go by the pilot oh. diameter or what, but it's a cute little thing. So my son will be happy that this is out and he wants to put this into the uh, other housing that he has for his uh, Spitfire conversion project. Here's another Spitfire part, upper uh, transverse leaf spring mount, uh, inch and three quarter wide by three sixteenths groove, four spot uh, locations for tapped holes, which he's going to do with a drill press and a location of absolute center. This is four inches long and two and fifteen sixteenths wide, so we'll center up on this mill it all with a half inch end mill and then switch over to a uh, center drill. Okay, got my zero set on this face and that face. Now I'm gonna come to the halfway point and halfway point and set 
an incremental zero. Okay, to get this edge of the slot correct, 1.75, half of that's 0.875, minus the radius of the cutter, 0 0.25, it's 0.625 on the DRO for the Y dimension. I'm going to come up with my knee until I just touch the part and then I'm going to dial in the 0.1875 on the quill travel. To be symmetrical about the center line, we have to offset 0.625 on this side of center. Closest I can get to a 3 inch by 2 and 3 sixteenths pull pattern is 1.5 off center and 1.094. Pretty simple part, exactly half the thickness. This was a 3 8 plate, and he's going to finish. He, this is a like a half inch hole for um, I think the center dowel of the spring, and then these would be for the hold down screws. And then this is going to get welded into another fabrication for holding his rear differential in place. Next step for working on my son's axle adapters is to find the center of the rotary table. There's a pilot bore here, and I made a little plug gauge with this chucked into the um, auxiliary collet holder that I made for the KT. I turned these two diameters in the same setup, so these run extremely close within a tenth or two. And this is a nice registered fit in that pilot and so I can indicate this surface with the head on zero which it is not at this point and uh, that will give me the center center up the head to the rotary table then I'm going to put one of these on that center for machining the scallops. That'll be the fixture point for machining the scallops. So my rule is always zero the head, which I have not done. My rule is always zero the head when I leave the machine, which I have not done in this last uh, set up. So I will do that now. And here's the completed suspension assembly. He redid the uh, spring pack with new uh, pads in between. There's a little nylon or UHMW pads in there. The uh, saddle piece that we made uh, is here. Actually, I think it's, it's welded to the top of this carrier. And this carrier assembly, these are the oblong pieces. This is all my son's engineering to replace that uh, original. And of course, that uh, complicated uh, back plate with the bushing mounts that we made twice and output uh, flanges here. Input flange, we did that in a previous video. Machined uh, clearance for the yoke for the drive shaft. So, cute little assembly. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was kind of a little bit of this and that, but still made progress, you know, working in the right direction all the time. That's, that's the name of the game, so. Um, got a fall festival coming up. I got to uh, get ready for uh, my wife's school. 
So got to get the hay wagon out of the, of the barn. That's going to be interesting. Um, there's a lot of things in the way and we got we got to move a few things to get that out, but, uh, you know, do what you got to do. So until next time, uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for watching uh, the videos. Share them with your buddies. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We, we just do a lot of different things, a lot of variety of things here at the shop. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, until next time, as always, stay safe.